His iconic image can be found on everything from statues to currency. It's even carved into the side of a mountain. There are countless books on his life and legacy. Now, Abraham Lincoln is the subject of a comprehensive exhibit on Pittsburgh's north side. The exhibit is called Lincoln in Pittsburgh. Lincoln is probably one of the most beloved presidents. Bruce Klein is the founder of Photo Antiquities Museum of Photographic History on East Ohio Street. We've contacted collectors over the years and numerous collectors have loaned us various things. In all, nearly 300 photographs, artifacts, and pieces of memorabilia. Some reveal surprising facts, like the time Abraham Lincoln came to Pittsburgh. In 1861, Abraham Lincoln, on his way to Washington, D.C., stopped at a train station. The train station is right here on the north side. It is now the post office, which is right near the uh, Nova Place Allegheny Center. And there's a plaque on the wall that Lincoln stopped here on his way to his inauguration. But Lincoln didn't just hop on the next train to D.C. He spent the night in downtown Pittsburgh at one of the region's most expensive hotels. The Monongahela Hotel was on Smithfield. The back of it faced the Monongahela River, almost across from Station Square. Lincoln stayed there. In 1861, the price for a room at the Monongahela Hotel started at $100 and up. It's a tremendous amount of money. Charles Dickens stayed there, and various presidents had stayed there. So it was the premier hotel in Pittsburgh at the time. Not long after his Pittsburgh visit, Lincoln was sworn in as President of the United States. His victory prompted seven southern states to secede from the Union to form the Confederate States of America. Slavery was tearing the nation apart. The concept that we should have a free country and everybody is created equal was definitely at the top of Lincoln's list and he felt that everybody should be free and nobody should be owned by anybody else. The Civil War dragged on for four long years and it took its toll on the president. So did the deaths of his son. One died before Lincoln took office, another during his presidency, and a third after Lincoln's death. It was really his face that changed with the beard and the thinness of his face and it, it was, you can see he's tired. By 1865, he looks tired. Lincoln had a tough life. Robert was his only son that survived, and it really played a major part in the way Mary, his wife, acted after the passing of her sons. Between losing her sons and then losing her husband, um, you know, it played on her. This is one of my favorite uh, pieces here. This is a collection, a collage taken between 1860 and 1865 of Lincoln and his family. It is one of the largest collections of Lincoln put together in one frame. The mounting process took us about three months because we had to make sure that everything was archivally mounted, archivally matted, and archivally framed. Because of advances in photography, Lincoln became the most photographed president of his time. But there are more than just pictures here. Right here in Pittsburgh, Soldiers and Sailors owns the life mask of Abraham Lincoln, which is very rare. They also have a replica of the Derringer gun that actually shot Lincoln. Huntington Bank collects rare checks. And we have the last check that Abraham Lincoln wrote in 1865, and he wrote it out to himself. And it was in the amount of $800. If you put it into $2017, it could be in the 15 to $20,000 range. And he used that money to pay expenses at the White House, such as food that he needed to buy for the people that worked for him in the White House. In reference to Gettysburg, we have a beautiful plaque of the Gettysburg Address done in copper, as well as the Gettysburg Address 
that was read by various people over the years. They would read the Gettysburg Address and then they would put a little notation underneath. Abraham Lincoln would live to see the end of the war, but not to complete his second term in office. In 1865, he was shot while attending a performance at Ford's Theater. We also show John Wilkes Booth, along with some of the other conspirators. We also have things about Lincoln's death, such as a copy of the funeral service of Lincoln's death, a copy of Lincoln in his casket, and there was a painting done of Lincoln uh, when he was shot with various people around him. It used to be that when you went in to make a photograph, you had to buy the chemicals, you had to buy glass. Visitors to the exhibit are fascinated for different reasons. Barry Robinson learned of a link between the president and the bank where he now works. Abraham Lincoln actually signed our charter in 1864, the first national bank of Greenville at the time, and now we are here headquartered in Pittsburgh. I really like Lincoln. He had a lot of hardships and persevered over many, many things that happened throughout his personal life as well as his political life. Leadership. I think of Honest Abe. Integrity. Trustworthy. And a strong interest in the common good. Most visitors reflect on those qualities as they admire Lincoln in Pittsburgh. If it wasn't for Lincoln, we may have two separate countries here today. And uh, he was able to pull it all together in such hard times. And people see that. So they walk away with a feeling of satisfaction and a respect for our 16th president, somebody they would have never known, but yet when they walk out of here, they feel like they've known him.